there are a couple things that I want you to remember when applying your clipper work, guys. I want you to always follow the lay of the coat. If that changes, if the coat swirls, use swirl down with your clipper. I want you to also remember to apply enough pressure in front of the clipper blade to roll the skin in front of the blade as the hair is being fed into the clipper blade. That's how you get a smooth clip. And I also want you to pay attention to scooping off like an airplane lifting off from a runway. Scooping the clipper off with every pass of the clipper. That will avoid any stop start marks that will be hard to camouflage later. So let's watch how I'm applying those clipping methods to this miniature schnauzer. The miniature schnauzer has a pattern set, so I need to drop off, scoop off at that pattern set. If you're not sure where the pattern set is on a schnauzer, I just uploaded a fantastic mini schnauzer, toy schnauzer, grooming video tutorial complete. Another thing you need to do is hold the skin taut with your opposite hand, not tight, taut so there's no wrinkles in the skin. It's very important to get a smooth clip by having the skin nice and smooth so the clipper can just ride right along and roll the skin in front of the clipper blade. Watch closely how I scoop off of the pattern set area on this mini schnauzer and roll the skin in front of the clipper blade at the same time. This creates the magic that you want when you're clipping a dog. Though I'm setting a pattern on this miniature schnauzer, I'm still applying those same techniques as I would as if I was clipping the entire dog with this seven blade. So as you're clipping your dog, whether or not you're setting a pattern, it doesn't matter. I want the words to be going through your head to read, roll the skin in front of the clipper blade, hold the skin taut with your other hand if needed, and scoop the clipper off of the hair with each pass just like an airplane lifting off from a runway. Now let's apply those same methods using a guard comb attachment. It's the same clipping methods guys as you would use if you were using a blade. We are using a guard comb here. We're rolling the skin in front of the clipper and we're completing each pass of the clipper and scooping off like an airplane taking off of a runway so important. Another reason I want you to really keep in mind that people fail with their clipper work is because they have not properly prepared the skin and coat through the brushing, bathing, and drying process. And because I want you to have complete success when you groom your dogs, whether you're a professional or you groom your own dogs, I've created a playlist on my channel and I will link it in the description below, guys. It is the complete guide to using your clipper, understanding clipper blades, understanding snap-on comb attachments, and how to properly prepare your dog for clipper work. That playlist will go further in depth than this video today. Another important method to performing clipper work is to understand that you're probably going to have to make about three passes over the same area in order to get a nice smooth finish. Now when I say three passes, I don't mean three passes over and over again in the same spot. I mean pass through the coat, move on, move on, come back to that same starting spot, make the same amount of passes, and then one final time go back and make a third pass over that area. Clipping over and over in the same place could irritate the skin. You want nice long smooth strokes not jabbing at the coat like this. Don't do that. You're not going to produce anything. You want to roll the skin in front of the clipper blade and follow through with that stroke with that pass. You don't want to do this. No jabbing. Long consistent passes with your clipper is going to cause pretty clipper work. You definitely want to keep that in mind. Nice, long, slow and guided and controlled passes with your clipper will produce good work. And that's the same method that you're going to apply when you're clipping down the legs. You want to kind of straighten out that leg so that you can make a nice, long, smooth pass and your clipper work looks very pretty. All right, moving on. Let's talk tools. Let's get to it everything you need to know about clippers. Dog clipper types, brands, and quality. Let's start with brands. Now the industry leaders are Andis, Oster, and Wall. But let me tell you, there are other clippers that perform well and cost less. 
for the home groomer. I also want to remind you that depending on what type of coat you're clipping and what type of work you're looking to do, you may not need to purchase professional top quality pet trimmer. If you're clipping a heavy matted coat type, you may have no other option but to spend a few extra bucks to purchase a clipper that can handle the job. And I know you want to have success. As a novice groomer, your clipper will be running for an extended period of time and your clipper blade absolutely will heat up and it could burn the skin of your dog. That's the concern. Unless, of course, you're using snap-on combs over the blade, then the blade doesn't have any contact with the skin whatsoever. Other than that, you are at definite risk of causing harm to their skin if your blade is hot and you don't realize it. So checking your blades is very important, as well as using cool care to keep your blade cool and clean and lubricated. I definitely suggest a two-speed clipper and starting on the lowest speed, clipping at home or new to grooming. Which leads us to the next topic to understand, strokes per minute, also known as SPM. All clippers perform the task of trimming hair, but there is an important factor that determines that particular clipper's ability to perform well. And that factor is strokes per minute, SPM. The ideal strokes per minute for clipping a dog with a thick coat or a matted coat or heavy coat is 3,000 to 4,000 strokes per minute. You may notice that most clippers share their SPM in the details of their product descriptions. However, when we look at this clipper on Walmart's shelf, that info is not listed on the box. Instead, you will notice an illustration such as this on the packaging to indicate the performance you can expect from that clipper. The reason the strokes per minute is not listed and an illustration is there instead because that clipper model was designed and marketed for the person who knows nothing about clippers. And in the case of this particular clipper, it's priced at $41.97 and I guarantee you will not be happy with the results that it produces. And here's why. The blade's not detachable, which means you cannot change the size of the clip but more importantly, the permanent blade size on this clipper is a number 10. A number 10 blade is not ideal for trimming the coat of any dog because it leaves no length of coat. That gives a whole new meaning to the term shave down. Why would Walmart encourage you to purchase this clipper for your pet? In my opinion, it's because they believe you're not going to successfully give your dog a haircut in the first place. They don't want you to spend too much money because that only adds to your disappointment. You already had an unsuccessful groom. Now you only spent $41 instead of... And the little comb attachments provided with this model would work fine as long as your dog was perfectly prepared and prepped before attempting to groom it. But the truth is most people don't have the knowledge or the setup to achieve proper bathing, brushing, and drying. Therefore, this clipper choice would be a total waste of money and you would spend all day trying to trim your pet only to have to call a professional groomer to finish the job appropriate. For my best clipper recommendation for you, my friends, would be the Andis AGC two-speed clipper for the novice groomer or the home groomer and the Wall KM10 for the pet groomer or for the intermediate groomer at home. As a detachable blade type clipper, that gives you the versatility to choose your blade size or use quality snap-on comb attachments to groom your pet. And this clipper type offers consistent power to the clipping blade. And the two speed option is a must for the beginner groomer. So you wanna give your dog a haircut, but you're confused about all these blade choices and brands. What blades and brands should you use to clip your dog? What's the difference? Are all blade sizes safe to use on any coat type? You will find two links in the description of this video. This is the perfect place to start by reviewing the clipping guide and the blade recommendations for the breed you're trimming for your dog. For example, let's say you're trimming a miniature schnauzer. You could use a four, blade, a five blade, a seven blade on the body to set the pattern. You would use a 10 on the pads of the feet and in the sanitary area and on the ears. You could use attachment cones for the legs and the furnishings or you could hand scissor that but you don't have to hand scissor because you can use snap-on cones. So what's the difference between a four blade, a five blade, a seven blade? The higher the number, the shorter the clip. Let's remember that. It's simple. For instance, a seven is shorter than a five. A 30 is shorter than a 15 blade. The higher the number, 
the shorter the clip. Now you may be wondering, what is the difference between blade brands themselves? Andis, Wall, Oster, Guide? There's no difference. They're the same. Each blade manufacturer uses different metals, sharpening techniques, different finishes on their blades, and it's just a matter of preference as to which one you choose to use, which one you want to work with. All detachable pet grooming clipping blades are universal, all of them, and those blades fit most all clipper brands such as Andis, Wall, Oster, Lob. What is my favorite choice of clipper blade to use? My favorite is the Wall clipper blades, by far, especially the competition series. I've tried every brand of blades, Andis, Oster, Guide, Wall. My favorite are certainly the Wall. I'm not getting paid to say that. I'm just telling you because I share my secrets. You guys know that. I'll tell the truth. I like Wall because they seem to maintain sharpness longer than their competitors. As long as you practice proper blade maintenance. I'm going to teach you proper blade maintenance on your clipper blades so that you can prolong the life of your blades and get the best out of them. Most for your money. Bang for your buck. Also going to show you what products to use to clean those blades and keep them in tip-top shape. You may have also noticed that there are ceramic edge blades. What are they? The cutting part of a ceramic blade is ceramic. Ceramic will maintain a sharp edge longer than a metal blade. I've used ceramic blades, but I did not notice an exceptional longer life. But what I did notice is my blade sharpening service frown upon sharpening ceramic blades, claiming that they're nearly impossible to renew to a factory edge like they can with a metal blade. And many blade sharpening companies won't sharpen ceramic blades. Therefore, they're not worth the extra money, the extra cost to purchase them. I stay away from ceramic blades for that reason. The wall competition series is definitely the blade choice for me. That's what I use every day in my salon. Are there dangers to the dog's skin with certain blade sizes? Yes, there absolutely are dangers to the dog's skin and coat with certain blade sizes. My personal recommendation is to never use a blade size shorter than a seven on a dog's body. Blades shorter than a seven on the body can seriously irritate the follicle, the skin, causing a skin infection. It could, didn't say it would, but it can. And quite honestly, you wouldn't want to clip their coat any shorter than a seven because their coat protects their skin from things such as allergens, sun, and insects. Their coat is also the key element that regulates their body temperature. Even a seven blade, in my opinion, is too short because it leaves their skin and coat vulnerable. Also, never go any shorter than a 10 blade for sanitary or around the ears, the head. Otherwise, you can cause irritation. Another danger with clipper blades is catching the skin in areas such as the armpits, the flank, the ears, where the ear connects to the head. Those are danger zones. Yes, you can cut a dog with a clipper blade. Don't forget that, guys. Catchable clipper blades are the only type of clipper blades that you want to purchase if you're using a professional pet clipper. Note, there are many types of clippers on the market. Clippers for humans. There are five-in-one clippers like the Arco and the Brevera. You want to make sure that you're purchasing blades that are for a detachable clipper or you'll be disappointed when your blades arrive because they won't fit your clipper. Now we've learned pretty much everything I think we need to know about blades. Except for one very odd type of blade, the skip tooth blade. Skip tooth blades look exactly like they sound, with every other tooth being short. The purpose of these blades is to cut through coats that may be matted, tangled, or very thick. Because of the spacing of the teeth, you can easily make a mistake with them, guys, and you can cut your dog. I do not recommend these blades. I think a 7F is fine. I don't use the skip tooth, but I thought I should let you know about them. Don't forget to refer to those links in the description of this video because it's going to explain to you what blades are suggested for what types of trim, what dog breed you're trimming. You can use various blades, but they're going to tell you the suggestions and the safest blades for those trims. Those are some pretty good references. I hope you guys go check them out. So now let's move on. How do we take care of these precious blades that we bought? 
Well, I'm gonna show you right now. This is Anda's Cool Care Plus for clipper blades. It's a five-in-one coolant, disinfectant, lubricant, cleaner, and a rust preventative. You can also purchase this on Amazon, link in the description below. The first thing you wanna do is just use a toothbrush. I picked them up at the dollar store really cheap and get all the hair off of your blade, out from everything that's stuck in between everywhere in the blade. Turn your clipper on, reseat your blade, grab your Cool Care, which is made by Andis, and spray the whole back of your blade, including the clipping edge. While the clipper is running and the blade is running, we are wiping off any excess oil or cleaner, but you do want the product to run through the clipping surface of your blade. I clean my blades before and after every use. Now we're going to oil our blade. I use Andis Clipper Oil and I love it. Let's put one drop at each corner of the clipping blade and then we're going to run a bead of it right along the clipping surface, just like this and let it run. It's important to keep your blade well lubricated and cleaned, both. Both are very important. So these two products are very important for taking care of your blades. If you do so, you will get tons of life out of these blades, guys. Now grab a rag or a paper towel and let's wipe any excess oil or cleanser off of this blade and it's ready for the next use. And it's cool care and Andis Clipper Oil. That's all you need, guys, to take care of these blades. And a toothbrush. Snap-on comb attachments. Oh, yes. Snap-on combs attached to a 10 or a 15 clipper blade, giving you precise, safe clipping, all while generating results that are second to none. Super duper. Snap-on comb attachments are a finishing tool used by most every professional in the industry, whether you're showing, grooming, grooming your dog at home, snap-on combs are the ticket to that. And what they do, they eliminate a lot of hand scissoring and give you a, a beautiful result. Hand scissoring takes a lot of time. Using snap-on comb blades saves you time, money, and effort. Now there is a trick to using them, and the only trick is knowing how to prepare your dog's coat before using snap-on combs to trim your dog. That's it. Proper coat prep is the only prerequisite to having success with using snap-on comb attachments to give your dog a haircut and produce professional winning results. What are my favorite snap-on comb attachments to use? I've used many. I think I've used them all. My favorite are the wall stainless steel snap-on comb attachments for detachable blades, hands down. You already know I will only recommend my favorite products and tools for you. The difference between the wall stainless steel snap-on combs versus other brands maybe brands that are made of plastic, maybe other brands that are made of stainless. The difference is, is that wall snap-on combs pack less. They push through the coat instead of smash down the coat, and they snag less, powering through all coat types. They have also proven to be a lot less likely to pop off while you're working. That can cause a major hair boo-boo. Ooh, -boo. it would just be awful. No, they really do. They're very secure on the clipper blade. They're top notch and they're affordable. Now, what do I mean when I say they pack less? Packing is when tiny hair clippings pack into your clipper blade, causing your work to look choppy and affecting the precision of your clipper work. Let me show you how easy it is to attach and detach the wall snap-on combs. You'll notice two little hooks that you will seat on the back of your 10 or 15 blade. Put those hooks against the back of the blade, push forward, and it will attach to the top of the blade. It's that simple. You'll feel it snap. That's why they're called snap-on combs. Now to detach it, you simply pull back towards the back of the blade and lift up. The comb will release from the top of the blade and then you can simply slide it right off. But these combs fit very securely. They really snap into place and they lock hard. I really like them. Now let's take a look at how easy it is to unpack your blade so you can continue on with that perfect groom. Detach your snap-on comb by pulling forward and lifting up. Our blade is packed with hair. Press and hold your blade release. Lift the blade forward and simply using a toothbrush or a blade brush, just brush away all those particles of hair. Those tiny little hair clippings are clogging and packing your 10 blade, which then will clog and pack your snap-on comb attachment as well. So let's clean that up too. 
That's all we gotta do. You're just unpacking the hair. It will affect your cut if you don't do this. Once it's tidied up, let's reseed our blade, reseed our snap on comb, and continue on with our groom. Just remember this, my friend, it's very simple. You use your wall snap-on combs over a 10 or 15 blade. Trim your dog as you would with any blade. A seven, a five, a four, a three and a half, whatever. You're trimming with your snap-on combs with the lay of the coat. Sometimes you can go against the grain of the coat to get a nicer clip on a soft-coated breed. That's all it is, guys. You can use different sizes on the legs and the furnishings to produce a fuller leg. Um, you may go shorter on a body pattern or, or on the head and the cheeks. You can use them on the head, on the cheeks, on the muzzle. It's perfect. Please don't hesitate to incorporate this very, very perfect tool into your grooming at home or if you're a professional. Never hesitate to take a safe, precise shortcut to produce a quality groom. There's nothing wrong with that and you should be proud of your work when you're done, and you will be. If you've liked this video, guys, please like it and share it. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss anything because I produce content for you every week so that you can provide quality care for your beloved pets at home, and I promise I won't let you down. Thank you for joining me.